Good morning everyone and welcome to the SLC webinar for today. Today we'll be looking at parallel phrases and how we can use parallel phrases in writing and in speaking and what effect this has on our writing. So before we start we have a couple of um, technical things to explain. Throughout the webinar I will be asking questions and giving you some tasks. So while we're doing the webinar write your answers into the chat box that you can see in the floating toolbar at the top of your screen. At the end of the webinar we will have some time uh, for questions and answers and in this section you can either use the chat box to ask your questions or the Q&A section at the top and we'll do our best to answer your questions today. So what we'll be covering today is we will look at what are parallel structures and give you some explanation. We'll look at when and how to use parallel structures and we'll look at some examples as well and practice identifying, recognizing and writing sentences using parallel structures. So first of all, what are parallel structures? A parallel structure can be defined as um, using the same pattern of words to show that two or more ideas have the same level of importance. And its parallel structures are important in your writing, in your speaking, because they sound natural. If you want to give um, examples to support your main ideas, if your final example follows a different grammatical pattern, it can sound unnatural or difficult for the reader. And as a reader or an examiner, it meets our expectations. So um, examiners or readers look for patterns in your writing. So we expect to see the same structure repeated in order to add cohesion to your writing. We can use parallel structures for a list. So in writing task what to, you may need to give some examples and you may want to give more than one example, in which case you can use parallel structures. We repeat grammatical structures in a sentence to show cohesion in speaking and writing. Let's have a look at some example sentences. So we have sentence A, in my free time, I enjoy sewing, hiking, and to swim. And we have sentence B, in my free time, I enjoy sewing, hiking, and swimming. Now, which sentence do you think follows a parallel structure? Which one has repetition of grammatical structures? A or B, write your ideas in the chat box. So yes, sentence B, as you've identified, is the structure, the sentence with parallel structures. We have a repetition of ing form. I enjoy sewing, hiking, and swimming. Although we can say, I enjoy to swim. Um, it sounds um, unusual if we, the two other verbs we have previously are ing forms. We can also uh, use, as we mentioned, we can say I enjoy to, so we can say I enjoy to sew, hike and swim, or I enjoy to sew, to hike and to swim. Now, if you have a structure which is a verb with to, you can either put to in front of the first verb, or you can put to in front of all of the verbs that you have in your list, um, as long as you follow a grammatical uh, pattern and parallel structures to give your writing cohesion. Now let's have a look at another example. 
remember that we repeat grammatical structures in a sentence to show cohesion. Is the sentence below parallel? People who live in densely populated cities commonly exhibit patterns of behavior such as restlessness, impatience, and they are frustrated. So is this an example of a parallel structure or not? Write your idea in the chat box. So the answer is no, this is not an example of a parallel structure. Let's have a look at why. So we can see we start with a pattern, but the pattern is not followed. So we have um, people who live in densely populated cities commonly exhibit similar patterns of behavior, such as restlessness, impatience and they are frustrated so the part highlighted in red has not followed the pattern um, of the previous part of the sentence so what I'd like you to do next is write into the chat box how can you change the structure of the information in red to make it parallel so it needs to match with the rest of the sentence Write your ideas in the chat box. So we've got some ideas coming through here. The pattern that we need to follow is a noun pattern. So we have restlessness, impatience, and frustration is uh, the way that we need to change our sentence. So as we can see, in order for our writing to be cohesive, we need to follow the same pattern. In this case, we are looking at abstract nouns, restlessness, impatience, and frustration. If you change the pattern for your last example or last part of a list, it can be confusing or jarring for the reader or for the examiner. So the next thing we're going to look at is how to use uh, parallel structures with correlative conjunctions. So these conjunctions and structures should be familiar to you already. So the first example we have is not only but also. So in essay writing or in speaking uh, we use not only but also to uh, give support and ideas. So in this example we have take hybrid cars as an example. They are not only environmentally friendly but also economical. So we have two adjectives. So we're following a pattern of environmentally friendly, economical, two adjectives here to show parallelism. We can also use neither or nor. Neither social networking sites nor instant messaging services have had a positive impact influence on the way we communicate. So as we can see here, we've got plural, repetition of plural nouns, social networking sites, nor instant messaging services. We can also use a similar structure, which is either or, and use a parallel structure. In order to improve your English, you could either study at home or take a course in a language school. So here we're following the pattern, uh, the verb pattern after could. So after could we use an infinitive without to. So we have could either study or take. 
So these um, parallel structures are adding cohesion to your writing and making it um, easier to understand and flow. We can also use parallel structures in coordinating conjunctions, comparison and clauses. So with a coordinating conjunction, for example, and, but or for, we use a parallel structure. You can use the phone to receive calls, but not to make them. As we can see here, the structure that we need to repeat is a verb with to. Notice we can use this structure in positive or negative, but we still need to follow the same pattern. In comparative phrases, now comparison is something that you're asked to do a lot in the exam, either in your writing or in speaking, particularly part three, speaking. Um, and we need to show cohesion uh, by using parallel structures, such as I would rather pay for my education than receive a grant. If we notice here, we've got our, the first structure, I would rather, and the verb that we need to use after would rather is an infinitive without two. So in the second part of the sentence where we're making the comparison, we also need to use infinitive without two. So we have the pattern pay and receive. If you use a structure that introduces a clause, then you also need to make sure that the clause um, is repeated in the same way. So if we're looking at, uh, for example, graphs or charts that you may get in task one in IELTS writing, in the next quarter, it is not expected that prices will rise, that earnings will increase, or that living standards will improve. So we're using the same uh, structure and repeating the same structure um, to show cohesion um, and flow in our writing. And if we notice, we also have, we've also used the same um, tense to explain our ideas as well. Now let's have a look at some practice. We have four sentences here. I'd like you to read the sentences and in the chat box decide which sentences contain parallel structures or parallelism and which sentences do not contain parallel structures. Write your ideas in the chat box. So when you're writing your answers, um, make sure you send it to everyone so we can all see and uh, mention which ones do contain parallel structures. I've got some ideas coming in already. Remember, parallel structures uh, follow a similar grammatical pattern or a similar word structure, for example, a repetition of a tense or a repetition of a noun or a repetition of a particular verb form.
So we've got some ideas coming in here. Let's have a look at uh, which ones are parallel. So we have, we debated the difference between the weather in Paris in the winter and how it is in the summer. Number two, I'm responsible for assessing and planning nursing care requirements. Number three, my duties include writing records and I have to administer medica medication. Number four, this essay will examine some of the reasons for childhood obesity and possible solutions. Notice that in two and three, these are quite common um, questions that you may have to answer in this speaking exam, talking about your job. And number four is um, something that you may you would be useful to write in essays. So let's have a look at which ones are parallel. So as we can see, most of you got this right. Number two is parallel. I am responsible for assessing and planning nursing care requirements. So we have two ING forms. Number four is also parallel. This essay will examine some of the reasons for childhood obesity and possible solutions. So we have a repetition of plural nouns. Not parallel, so not following the same pattern is number one, the difference between the weather in Paris and how it is in the summer. And number three, my duties include writing records and I have to administer medication. So it's, they're not following the same pattern. So the next thing I'd like you to think about is how can you correct these sentences? So we've got them um, errors highlighted in red. So um, they, these sentences are not using parallel structures. How could you change them so that you can, they use parallel structures? Write your ideas into the chat box. Um, as to how we can change sentence one and sentence three so that they both use parallel structures. So write your ideas into the chat box. How can we change sentence one to make it parallel and sentence three to make it parallel? Okay, so we've got an idea in from Werner who's changed it by um, repeating the season. So the weather in Paris in the winter and in the summer. So that's one way that you can change the sentence and use parallel structures. What ideas do you have for number three? Good, so we've got some answers here. You've all identified that in number three, we need to repeat the ING structure. So my duties include writing records and administering medication. Let's look at how another way that we can change sentence one. So we can either change it for the seasons like we've seen, 
or we can repeat the structure. We debated the difference between the weather in Paris in the winter and the weather in Paris in the summer. So there are different ways to show parallel structures. This is one way. And as we can see, my duties include writing records and administering medication. So we've looked at different ways that we can show parallel structures in writing. And we've looked at the importance of parallel structures in terms of making your writing and speaking cohesive and meeting the expectations and conventions of essay writing and report writing in English. Here are some of the resources that uh, you can use to study this, these structures. So there are several educational and university websites that give more explanations and examples. And then there are some practice activities. So you have um, Parallel Structures 1, which helps you to recognize structures. And then Parallel Structures 2, which gives you practice. Now, these are on the topic of engineering. Um, however, they are the activities are easy to understand and give you good practice in Parallel Structures. Thank you very much for listening today. Now we've got a few minutes for questions. So if you have any questions, pop them either into the chat box or into the question and answer tab at the top. And we will do our best to answer them. So for any questions about the topic from today, you can put your questions into the chat box or you can use the Q&A tab, which is on the toolbar on your screen. Okay, thank you, thank you very much to everyone for coming along and for listening and taking part in our webinar today. Um, we will be doing another SLC webinar in uh, two weeks and we will confirm the topic um, as soon as possible. So thank you very much everybody and uh, we will see you again in two weeks time.